Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of MSU Inside Out. I'm your host Juan Vidal. And I'm Jamie Council. We have a lot of great guests on today. We'll be hearing about from the new president of Minot State University. Also hearing from a couple students uh, from the College of Business, a leadership program. And hearing from Dr. Terry, uh, Dr. Terry, is it Hell? I, I can't remember, but it's one of the board uh, yes. talking about Dr. Shirley. And then also Connor Mooton, a senior catcher from uh, the MSU baseball team and they got a couple wins. Over Not only do we have a lot of great interviews today, we have great segments, we have Ward on the Street, we have Inside Outdoors and also some sports uh, to update you on as well. A very exciting program we have today. Uh, we have an interview with uh, Chris or uh, not, I'm sorry, Jesse. Jesse, yeah, and, and it's Dr. Terry Helmstead, but let's go hear from him. Uh, Jesse Rossa is standing by. education first of all thank you for joining us thank you for having me now it's a big day at my on the campus of Minot State as we did announce a new president today um, and you were the chairman of that selection committee so could you tell us a little bit about your choice well there were is a 12-member committee that uh, sat down for a long time and we we broke it down to three people and we interviewed th those three people today on campus and uh, the winner was Steve Shirley dr. Steve Shirley from Valley City all right, so can you tell us a little bit about Steve Shirley and why he was your choice for the president? Well, he's very knowledgeable about the state of North Dakota and the things that are happening here, and, and he's, he's so enthusiastic. He wants to, to he's a Minot person. He loves Minot, and he wants to be back, and uh, he was very, very enthusiastic about the job, and, and it came across pretty much in the interview. All right, and like I said earlier, you are the chairman. You were the chairman of that selection committee. So um, I know it's a long process. You told me it started back in September with a plenty of candidates. So could you tell me just a little bit more of what you went through with that process? Well, we had 12, 12 people on our selection committee from the university and the community that uh, were part of that. We met on September 10th, and we we uh, wrote the profile and job description for the for the Minot State University president. And then uh, it took three months before we got those uh, applications. 37 people applied. All of them were very, very qualified. And then I met with a consultant back in uh, January 15th. And we went through the list of applicants and we broke that down to 16 people. And those 16 people were looked at by the committee on January 22nd. And we decided to bring uh, we had eight of them that we interviewed by the Ivan search. They were uh, an internet video in their own uh, home schools, and we saw eight of them. And then four of them were selected to come on campus uh, the week of January or February 11th through the 14th. And uh, from that, we selected the three to come to campus today to be interviewed by the State Board of Higher Education. All right. So you said. Dr. Shirley is very knowledgeable and you think he'll do a good job. What are you most looking forward to in his time as, as president of Minot State University? Well, I think he has some great ideas and lots of enthusiasm and, and uh, he started some great programs at Valley City and I think that people in uh, Valley City are going to miss him because he's, he's uh, very well respected by their community. but. He has some ideas and it's going to be interesting because Dr. Fuller is going to be a hard person to replace, but he's anxious to get started and, and start uh, working on some of his ideas on campus. All right, well, thanks again. That's Dr. Terry Jalmstead of the State Board of Higher Education. He was also the chairman of the selection committee for the president of Minot State University. And I'm Jesse Rosvit reporting from the Beaver Dam. Back to you guys in the studio.
All right, uh, thank you, Jesse. So yeah, that's uh, Dr. Harry, Terry Holmes out of the State Board of Higher Education. I'm really excited about your interview coming up. I am too. Uh, in fact, Chris has a little more, more information on my interview coming up here because it is breaking news. Chris, what do you got? Oh, we have a little bit of come of uh, in uh, bio coming up of the new presidents. So I'll get to that here in a bit. And then I also have some word on the street. So we'll see what they got. Oh, you, it is a great tale of the squirrels. So we'll see how that goes. So let's All get right. to it. Yeah. It was announced today that Dr. Stephen Shirley has become the 11th president of Manat State University. Shirley uh, currently serves as president of Valley City State University, where he leads a campus of over 1,300 students and 190 faculty members. Native of Fargo, North Dakota, Dr. Shirley earned his bachelor's and master's degree in business administration and a PhD in teaching and learning, all from the University of North Dakota. Dr. Shirley will take over for President David Fuller in July. <clears throat> we are back with another Ward on the Street this week. Chris and Ward discuss the popular furry creatures on campus with other students. Welcome to Ward on the Street. I'm Ward, and this week, we're going nuts. The topic of discussion this week is Sciores carolinensis, more commonly referred to as the Eastern Gray Squirrel, still more commonly referred to as just a squirrel. Hi there, how's it going? Oh, hey. Hi, uh, what's your name? Christine. Hi, Hi. my name is Ward from uh, Ward on the Street. Yeah. Going nuts this week. Uh, <laughs> do you have uh, some sort of uh, story or something that happened well, to you once? I was walking to class one day, yep. and there was a squirrel just standing in the middle of the sidewalk, and he was like, okay, has yeah, food yeah. around and whatever. So I'm like, always oh, busy with the food, like I'll oh, just walk by. <laughs> well, he just looked up and he just stared into my soul, Seriously? and like I tried to walk by it, and like he wouldn't let me pass. Oh no! <laughs> it was, <laughs> was frightful. Whoa. Whoa. That sounds scary. <laughs> that sounds scary enough, right there. I uh, hear rumor that you have uh, kind of your own personal uh, squirrel story. Well, yes, I do. It happened my sophomore year at Dakota Hall. It was around spring semester, so it's just after the winter. The squirrels were getting hungry and stuff. And I come home. I had left the window open. This is important to the story. <laughs> I had left the window open, and I come back, and there's a squirrel on my bed. It had gnawed through the screen. Oh, my word. <laughs> it must have smelled all my snacks inside my room. It came back the next morning, and that's where I got these no. brilliant photos. That's the whole right. Subsequently, Emily's story is not alone. Other reports from squirrel uh, incidences on campus have also been told. Just goes to show how much more prevalent of an issue squirrels have become here on the campus of Minot State University. Reporting for KMSU Channel 19, I'm Ward with Ward on the Street. You can view more tales of these squirrels in the extended version shared on Chris and Ward's Facebook profiles. And now we have an exciting interview with Juan today with our new announced president of, the, of MSU. So. I sure do, Chris. Thank you very much. Dr. Stephen Shirley, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, basically, he's the new captain of the ship here at Minot <laughs> State. Um, once, again, once again, thank you so much for the interview. Congratulations. Uh, it's, it's, we're, we're glad to have you here. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Thanks so much for the invitation. This worked out perfect with the timing today and uh, happy to be here and be on your program and see your, your studio and meet all the folks here. It's a great, uh, uh, great to have a, a television production here right here at Minot State. Yes, uh, we, we consider ourselves very lucky to have such a, Absolutely. such a professor in the department. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, what did you see in Minot State uh, that made you want to make the transition from VCSU to Minot State? You know, I'm a North Dakota native. I've got strong ties, uh, certainly within the state, but but even here within Minot. Uh, both of my parents were from Minot. Uh, I had grandparents from this community, so I've I've known this community uh, to a certain degree for for many many years, for my whole life. And so, um, you know, that certainly was a good natural tie. I obviously know the the North Dakota University system. I've been at Valley City State, as you mentioned, for the last six years, mm -hmm. uh, and. And uh, I just think there's a tremendous amount of excitement and energy and, and positive things going on here at, at Minot State University and the Minot community and in this whole part of the state. And so uh, when I saw the, the position, uh, certainly looked like a, a very um, exciting opportunity, a, a good next step, if you will, uh, in my own career. But also, I think, really uh, appealed to me as far as just the, the energy, the enthusiasm, all the wonderful things going on in, in Minot these days. So, And uh, MSU and Valley City State, 
face some similar issues, uh, enrollment, retention, uh, constant changes from the Higher Education Board. Uh, what, uh, what are some of these things that you plan on implementing that uh, maybe are going to help us along the future? You know, uh, a couple of the things that we've really had some, some good success with at, at Valley City State, uh, we've grown our, our campus enrollment about 40% in the last six years. So we've had some, some tremendous student enrollment growth. Um, we've had some fantastic growth as far as private scholarship availability. Uh, we had a record uh, amount of private scholarships offered last year to students. Uh, we've grown our foundation base, which is our, our private gifts significantly. You know how important those private dollars are, those scholarship yep. dollars are in attracting and recruiting and, and retaining uh, not just students in general, but the right students and, and uh, good students into the university. And so to have those dollars available. So we've had some great success there. We've added some new academic programs there that have been uh, uh, really helped with that growth, have fit in with our mission well. And so I look forward to, to learning about what's what's going on here at Minot State vis-a-vis -vis, uh, enrollment, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, you know, the, the foundation, private mm -hmm. scholarships, the academic programs that are currently available here, what other opportunities might be out there. Really just that whole gamut. Uh, there's a lot of exciting things for me. I'm I'm going to be doing a lot of listening and learning and in my first few months on the job obviously there's a lot to learn and uh, but I look forward to those conversations. Okay a uh, quick question how's your family taking the move and you, you know they're pretty there? excited I, uh, my wife Jennifer and our little uh, two and a half year old mm -hmm. uh, they're both here today uh, with me so it's been an exciting day for uh, not just you know me personally and I know for the campus as well with all, everything going on but but for from a family standpoint as well so we're excited and now we begin all the transition work and look for a house and all those sorts of things so lots of things ahead here in the next few months. Alrighty thank you you so very much for joining us this thank was you. a this was a great interview uh, thank you from everybody thank you for coming on here Appreciate especially it. just after you know just fresh off of being nominated right. thank so you. Uh, well right now we have a interview with Emily Madal and let's uh, kick it to her all right thanks guys I'm here with Addie Weeks and Ashley Brink thank you guys so much for being here with us today these girls are members of the um, College of Business Leadership program here at Minot State. And you guys have been working on a project um, this past semester, or this current semester. Tell me about what you guys have been working on so far. Um, we're actually working with the Domestic Violence Crisis Center in Minot to fill their new safe home um, with the essential items like um, towels, bedding, that kind of stuff. Um, we've just kind of been raising donations. and. Uh, just we're, we're raising donations. We've been going around to different businesses in the community looking for some help to kind of reach our goal. We have a goal of $6,000 and we are just about $700 away. So what kind of reaction have you been getting from the community, you know, knowing that you're doing such a good fundraiser for such a good cause? I mean, have you guys been getting some positive reactions from people? We live in a really awesome community. People are really helping us out and we just could help that we get a little bit more and get there. So what is it like for you guys to, you know, be a part of something like this and know that you're able to help out such an awesome group? It's really empowering. Like it like makes you feel really accomplished to know that you're actually doing something and the community is behind you. Making a difference. So if anyone wants to be a part of this or donate or even just learn more about what you guys have been doing, what should they do? How should people get involved? Uh, you can get in touch with the College of Business, and they have a lot of our information. Otherwise, we have a Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash MSU DVCC project. And if anyone else wants to learn anything more just about the leadership program in general, um, what would you kind of want to let everybody know about it? Um, it's We're having a lot of fun in there. We're learning a lot about how to develop our leadership skills, and it's just a great program. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here with us today, and we will throw it back to you guys in the studio. Thank you so much, Emily. Uh, leadership is one of the big things we do emphasize here on Minot State Campus. Uh, we definitely do, and so I'm really excited. That was a great interview by Dr. Shirley. I met him earlier in the year, but we still have a lot coming up in the show. We're about halfway through. We'll hear all about cross-country skiing and also from Connor Mooton, a senior catcher for the MSU baseball team, and about... Carly Bogues, 46-point performance last night, as well as the women's basketball trip through the NSIC tournament, and then also more about weather coming up with Chris after the break. Thank you to our underwriters. Walmart. At Walmart, you can save money so you can live better. MSU Hockey Club, the 2013 ACHA Men's Division I National Champions. Visit us online at msubeaverhockey.com or on Facebook and Twitter. Western Pacific Crane and Equipment. 
the authorized dealer for Manitowoc, Grove, and National Crane. The Center for Extended Learning. Our mission is to provide flexible, accessible, and quality lifelong learning opportunities. All-American Trophy. Established in 1983, located on South Broadway for all your trophy and screen printing needs. The Pita Pit. Sandwiches, soup, and salad. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. Art Main. Women's clothing, accessories, and art supplies. Located on Main Street. Midwest Oil Jobs. Brings employers, retailers, and other professionals from the Midwest under one roof to connect like-minded individuals. Creative Property Management. Over 45 years of experience in managing properties and helping tenants find the right home. MSU Athletic Department, NCAA Division II. Promoting good character and a positive experience. Red Rising. MSU Red and Green. Monarch State University's official student-run newspaper. Digital Office Center. Offices located in Minot and Bismarck. Provides the complete line of Xerox equipment, supplies, and services. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Located on South Broadway across from Walmart. Be seen, be heard on the Alshire, Black Box, and Amphitheater stages. MSU Theater, where we tell the world's stories. MSU Art Department, stimulating creativity campus-wide by providing exhibitions and art events. Fiance Bridal, located downtown Minot, and now you can shop online. NDAD, help for people with disabilities and health challenges. Pepsi of Minot, the local Pepsi Cola bottling company serving the North Dakota areas of Minot, Dickinson, Devil's Lake, Botno, and Hedinger. Rick Jewelry, where you'll shimmer and shine. Watney Realtors, a full-service real estate agency handling residential, commercial, and investment properties. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer, located in the Beaver Ridge Plaza. RL, specializes in creating custom-made vintage mod children's and baby clothes. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream, good time to be together. KCJB AM, 910 AM. Minot News and Information Station. KIZZFM Z94, Minot's only station for today's hit music. 97 Kicks FM, today's hot new country. KZPR FM, Minot's rock station, 105.3 The Fox. KMXA FM, Minot's best music mix, mix 99.9. SOS Image, improving the health and self esteem of every client. Grizzlies, the place for wood fried food, friends, and family. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm your host Juan Videl. We still have lots of show coming up for you. And I'm Jamie Council. Uh, speaking of lots of show, we're going uh, to Mariah next, which is sitting right over here at the desk to talk a little bit about cross-country skiing. I do. I'm looking forward every week, you know, our MSU Inside Outdoors segment, and I'm going to go ahead and get started on it right now. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Mariah. The Winter Olympics have come to an end and inspired two of our very own. Juan Videl and Chris Price show us what cross-country skiing in Minot is all about. Staying active in the winter can be tough. We are in Oak Park for a new experience. On this week's Inside Outdoors, we're going to try a little cross-country skiing. My friend Rachel and I here, we've come to Oak Park. We're going to try and get a little exercise. Cross-country skiing is popular in North Dakota because of its large Nordic heritage, and when done in the backcountry, it's referred to as touring. It's a Winter Olympic sport with several events and is considered one of the toughest endurance sports on Earth. You burn most calories per hour of execution than any other activity. <sighs> Whew. Now let me tell you, I've never skied before, and this sure is a lot of work, but I'm getting the hang of it slowly. There are groomed trails all over North Dakota. Lake Metagoshi, Lake Sakakawea, and the Badlands boast some of the most scenic trails. Some safety tips while touring. Always have a partner. Tell others what trail you're on. Find your estimated time back, and if you find yourself sweating, stop immediately, dry yourself off, and maybe shed a layer. 
Thanks for joining us, Rachel. How you feel? I'm tired. I need a nap and a warm cup of hot cocoa. Hot cocoa sounds absolutely delicious. This concludes another adventure. Join us next week on MSU Inside Outdoors. Next week on MSU Inside Outdoors, Chris and Juan go spear fishing. Now, speaking of outdoor activities, we looks like you have a baseball player over there, Jamie. I do, I do. Um, thank you, and uh, we'll get right to this interview. Sounds good. All right, joining me now is Connor Mooton, a senior catcher for the baseball team. And um, so you're from Canada, British Columbia, yeah. Victoria. Yeah. And so being a senior, how does it kind of feel to be in your last year of uh, last year of eligibility for college sports? Oh, well, it's definitely exciting. Um, the season just started, so we're excited to get going, get playing, start playing games. It's been a long journey with all the practices and everything, but at the same time, it's a little sad. Because you know at the end of the year, this is it. It's definitely going to be emotional. Yeah, yeah, you're a four-year um, Minot State University senior, yeah, that's right. so that's exciting. And then speaking of games, you guys went 2-2 two and two against Wayne State in a series over the weekend, and you guys dropped your first two. The first one was by a lot, the yeah. second one was by a little, but then you're able to get those two wins. Uh, how was kind of the weekend? Was it just getting into games, or what kind of happened in those games? Well, uh, the first day, you could definitely tell, or the first game especially, we definitely had some jitters. Um, everyone was a little nervous, a little overexcited. We kind of played anxious and got out of our element there. But in the second day, we really bounced back, played Minot State Beaver baseball, had, you know, grinded out some at-bats, you know, we like to say it's never going to be pretty, but we'll find a way to get it done. Yeah, as long as you get the W, that's all that counts. And um, I know you guys have a little bit of a break for your next games. You guys get to head to Arizona on March 10th. Um, so what are you guys kind of working on in this break? You know, after you have games under, you kind of can see all the holes, I should say. Right, exactly. Well, it's definitely going to be nice to get to Arizona. It's like 100 degrees warmer than it is here. So, But uh, overall, we've got to stick with our fundamentals, stick with our approach. You know, we, we uh, preach the, uh, focusing on the process over the outcome. You know, we don't believe that results right now are the most important thing. We just got to build up so from the conference tournament, then we're ready to play. Yeah, and rub it in about the weather, by of the course. way. Of course. But then you're also on the team during the flood, which I know affected the baseball team in a huge way. Uh, what was it like kind of going through that experience? Uh, it was definitely tough. You know, we didn't have a home field. We practiced out in Surrey, which is about 20 minutes away. Yeah. And just, you know, not having a field it affected everything. It affected recruiting, it affected practicing, preparation for games. And everything. It was tough, but I think it made us stronger in the long run. Well, that, uh, that's, yeah, it's definitely a lot of respect goes out to you guys. I mean, you guys even play on your home field. There's some players that didn't until last spring. And then you're a physical education and corporate fitness major. What are your plans post-MSU? Um, Post-MSU, I'd like to, I haven't really decided yet. I'm either going to go the teaching route or I'm going to like to be like a personal trainer or strength coach route. If I could do that with a tie to baseball still, that would kind of be ideal for me. Kind of the ideal way to pull it yeah. all together. Stay in the game. Stay in the game. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me. We're, that's all the time we have today. And so again, that's Connor Mooton of MSU Baseball. And then next we're going to be hearing about a performance by another athlete. And I know we're going to go to Leon for that. Yeah, we certainly are. She had quite a performance indeed. The Minot State women's basketball team won their first ever NSIC postseason game last night, defeating Upper Iowa 74-73. Senior forward Carly Bogue had a career game, setting an NSIC single game playoff record with 46 points. Bogue put the Beavers on her back, scoring 24 of the team's 31st half points. Unfortunately for Upper Iowa, she didn't cool off at halftime, adding 22 more. As well as scoring 46 points, Bogue pulled down 16 rebounds and added 5 blocks and 5 steals, showing her all-around talent. Carly's sister, junior forward Christina Bogue, scored the final basket of the game on a layup with eight seconds left to put the Beavers up for good. The Beavers then had one final defensive stand as junior guard Morgan Close blocked the Peacocks' final attempt of the game. The win keeps the Lady Beavers' season alive. They will travel to Sioux Falls Sunday to take on Concordia St. Paul in a quarterfinal matchup. During the regular season, the Beavers lost their only matchup against Concordia, falling 63-68. Tip-off will be at 6 p.m. The game will be available for streaming on northernsun.org. The MSU men's basketball season came to an end last night as the Beavers fell to Winona State 56-67. Senior forward Chris East led the way for the Beavers, scoring 20 points and grabbing 10 rebounds to finish his college career with a double-double. It was also the final game for three other seniors, Sam Johnson, EJ Williams, and Isaiah Gandy, all saw their careers come to a close with a tough defeat. The Beavers men finished the season 8-19. Don't miss your final opportunity of the year to catch the Beaver men's hockey team at home. The defending national champions will host North Dakota State at the Mesa Arena Friday and Saturday. The puck is scheduled to drop at 7.30 both nights. 
The Beavers will start their national title defense on March 8th when they travel to Delaware to take on the University of Delaware in the second round of the national tournament. Spring training games are beginning for Major League Baseball, but the Beavers have already played four games and sport a 500 record early in the season. Sophomore pitcher Austin Bernston was named NSIC Pitcher of the Week. Bernston was phenomenal in his season debut, throwing a complete game shutout. Bernston struck out a career-high eight batters, walked none, and gave up only six hits. The award marks the first time a Beaver baseball player has received a weekly award since joining the conference in 2012. Beaver Wrestling will look to send their program's first ever grappler to the NCAA Division II National Championships when they compete in the Super Region 3 tournament Friday. Senior Bobby Bartz fell just one victory away from qualifying for the national tournament last season. As an NAIA program, the Beavers sent five wrestlers to the national tournament, including current junior Joshua Douglas, who will be competing in the 133-pound weight class. Freshman Tiger Pash leads the Beavers with 17 wins this season. He is a favorite to qualify for the Division II National Tournament at 174 pounds. Minot will begin wrestling at 10 a.m. Carly Bogue had one impressive night, guys. I know on my personal uh, intramural team, I could use 46 points a game because we haven't won yet. <laughs> I hear there's a lot of trades looking to go for her. She's my neighbor. Yeah, and I can literally say Carly Bogue made it rain last night. I think we'll be able to get some rain out here for the uh, outside as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be... Uh, <laughs> More like snow. Yeah, right. maybe. More maybe. like snow. More like snow, yeah. <laughs> In your earlier interview, they were going to get 100 degrees warmer. We're not going to be so lucky. <laughs> yeah, but, once again, rub it in. Right, but uh, <laughs> why don't we go check it out over at the Weather Center. Sounds good. All right, so as you see right now, we have 13 degrees. feels like 7, so that's not too bad overall. Um, and it's uh, sunrise is at 7.30 still, and sunset will be around 6.30 again as well. Now tonight uh, we have, um, sorry about that, there's some technical difficulties going on. Tonight we have three degrees, um, and uh, there's going to be some clouds going on. Um, Bismarck is five degrees, and uh, Fargo is at negative seven. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of colder, it's going to be a little colder tonight. But as we continue on, you're going to notice that we're going to even get even colder this week. I have, um, it's going to be two uh, um, degrees in Williston, and you're going to also see Grand Forks around six. Um, again, it's going to be very cloudy overall. And oh, there I am. Yep. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have uh, colder temperatures. We're going to get down to uh, below ne below 22, um, and we're going to you know we're going to get down further and further every day. And tomorrow night, uh, we're going to be even colder, and that's going to just keep zipping on through until Saturday, um, where we start getting negative as the highs, or uh, below, below 10 degrees, below 7. Again, these are not fun things. Sunday, we're going to start to see it go a little bit higher into the 0, 1, 2 degrees. Not very fun. But then as we continue on, you'll also see that we're going to get 7 degrees, 12, but we are going to have chances of snow on those first couple days there. So we're getting colder with snow, but there should be a chance of get, getting better after. All right, sounds good. I mean, if it's going to be cold, it might, it might as well be a little bit of snow, right? I, I guess. It's debatable. <laughs> I'm just waiting till spring. But thank you, Chris. Thank you, yeah, Chris. Appreciate absolutely. it. <laughs> well, that's all, uh, that's all the time we have today. Thank you for joining us in our show. Great interview. I'm really f looking forward to what... Uh, he has. And then also Skaters as Waiters is going on for the Minot State at Buffalo Wild Wings. But join us next week on MSU Inside Out. Are you okay?